Hey everybody, I'm Folygon, and in this video we're going to be looking at how to hand paint some eyes in ZBrush. Uh, I really don't think it's all that hard, so we're going to go through it pretty quickly, and then you guys can get on to hand painting your own eyes in the future. Alright, so the first thing that we need is obviously a pair of spheres. But not just any spheres, I highly encourage you guys to use uh, a sphere with uh, poles on either side. It's going to make this process uh, a little bit easier. Uh, to get a sphere like that, you're going to want to click on Append under Subtool and grab the Sphere 3D. This is a sphere with poles on it. You'll get this guy uh, right here. And then after you place that in the eye socket, all you want to do is rotate it around so that the uh, pole is facing you as if it was looking at you. After you have that set up, all we're going to do is start painting these. So the first thing that we need is a paintbrush. And for the paintbrush, I'm going to be using uh, essentially what is a standard brush. Uh, the first thing you need to do on that standard brush is come on up here to the top of your screen and make sure that MRGB is the only thing that is selected up here. Make sure that these are not on. And then we want to find and select our toy plastic material uh, down here in the standard materials. After you have that selected, uh, just go ahead and click on Fill Object over here, and you can maybe hit that a couple times just to make sure it applies all the way. Uh, if you are having some weird artifacting happening that you're not expecting, make sure that this RGB intensity slider is all the way set to 100. Uh, then we're going to select RGB up here, and we are actually going to change this number to around maybe 10 or so. You want it to be a little bit low for this process. Uh, and then from there, we want to add some subdivision levels to our eyes. I've already done that, so I'm just going to drag this slider all the way up. Uh, essentially, you just want enough subdivision levels so that you can get some high-res poly paint out of this. And it looks like some of my poly paint is still on there, so I am once again going to just fill that in, make sure we're getting rid of any of those artifacts, any of that stuff going on. Then I'll just very quickly drag that back on down to 10 or so. All right, so from here we can go ahead and start painting our eyes. Uh, I've just filled this in with a pure white color. I recommend uh, that we're gonna use a slight off-white color for the base. So to do that, we're just gonna click and drag on this just a little bit, pull that down, and what we wanna do is just click on Fill Object a few times. So let me drag this down maybe about halfway to gray, and essentially what we're doing when we're clicking on Fill Object with this RGB intensity slider is we're saying, fill in this color 10% of whatever I select. So if I put this on black, and then I fill this in, it will fill that in to uh, about 10% black or so. So we can go ahead and sample that color if we want to figure out exactly where that is just by pressing the C, color, uh, C key on your keyboard. And you can actually do this uh, anywhere on your screen, including your ZBrush user interface. You can sample any color, essentially. Uh, and then from here, we want to go ahead and get some actual paint for kind of our pupil iris area. And uh, we can go ahead and just choose any color. I'm feeling some blue eyes. We already got a, a kind of a darkish, purplish blue here. Let's maybe go a little bit more towards that baby blue and maybe somewhere around here. This is not an exact science. Uh, you might find something that you like a little bit more. So kind of play around with it and experiment. But we can go ahead and now start using our paintbrush. We can go ahead and do a little test here, just kind of see how it's working on our sphere. Remember that 10% intensity there helps make this a little bit uh, a little bit softer, a little bit more easy to control, I think. I'm going to hit Shift F, which turns on your polyframe. This will show you essentially where that um, where that pole is, and that's essentially where we want to be painting. So I've aligned this in such a way that I can go ahead and start painting directly on that pole. And I'm just going to click and start moving my pen around and start filling that in very easily. Uh, and I think that's a little bit too small, so let's scale up the draw size of our pen a little bit and make that a little bit larger. And let's see how that looks. All right. You know, I think I want to go a little bit darker here for this kind of base color. So I will select uh, something a little bit closer to black, and I'm just going to fill this in a little bit, just a little bit to darken that up. 
And then essentially what we're gonna do from here is grab a lighter color to start contrasting this. And we wanna make our draw size a little bit more small and then start painting that around here. And we really don't wanna overdo this. It's really easy to get super heavy handed and just kind of fill that color in and get this really harsh line. But the uh, whole point here with this 10% infill for our color is that we do it a little bit gradually uh, so we can get a, a tiny bit of a, a gradient there. So I'll just fill that in a little bit and that's starting to look pretty good. So essentially from here, we're gonna go ahead and switch our color to black. And I've just pressed the V key on my keyboard to do that. Uh, v essentially swaps between whatever two colors you have here selected. And we can go ahead and give that a test. It looks like it's ready to go. So let's go ahead and get a pupil in here, nice and small. Try to find that vertice in the middle. And we'll say uh, about that size is pretty good for now. So I've been zoomed in here pretty close so we can take a step back and just kind of get an idea of scale. I find that during the uh, process of painting eyes, you'll often find a lot of areas where some things might be wrong with your anatomy at this stage. So this might be a good point to kind of step back, see how things are kind of lining up with your eyelids and kind of go back to painting from there. Uh, but we're just gonna continue on here. I'm pretty happy with how this is um, sitting in the eye socket here. So uh, I'm essentially just going to use our black color now to start hand painting in some shadows around the eyes. So we're gonna start here just a little bit above the, uh, the pupil and just kind of start filling in this dark black color. And this immediately starts adding in a little bit of that shadow that we expect to see uh, coming from the top of the eyelid, mainly around this uh, iris, which gives it a nice kind of uh, gradated look from top to bottom. So I'll do that a little bit more here, and then I'll shrink my brush down, and then I'll just start kind of playing around with getting a light shadow around the ridge there of that top eyelid. And I am pressing the uh, solo key over here to kind of swap back and forth on viewing just my eyeball and everything together. I have that set up to a hot key though, so for uh, explaining that very quickly. So let's just get in here, you know, fill this in just a little bit more. It's very easy to overpaint this and go a little bit too heavy handed. So we're just gonna do a little bit, just a little bit, and try to follow your lines through all the way past the corners as you don't want there to be any kind of awkward dead ends or white highlights sticking out there. So that's starting to look pretty good. Uh, if we just undo a couple times, I'll just click here on my undo timeline and kind of see the difference here. Let's go all the way back to right there. So a huge amount of difference in just making the eye feel more 3D. This is the effect that we are attempting to achieve here by hand painting in these shadows. So getting a lot more depth there now. And now we're gonna switch back to blue, that color that we were using before. But this time I am going to go a lot lighter and uh, pretty saturated here. And essentially what we want to do is just come along the bottom ring here with our brush and just paint in ever so gently a little bit of highlight. Just kind of a nice U shape through there. And that helps to really brighten up the eyes and give them, again, more of that 3D look. Uh, I might have done a little bit too much, but you know what? I think I kind of like it, so I will hold on to that for right now. And then the last uh, kind of parts of this, we're pretty much done at this stage, but the, the kind of moving forward from here is going to be more so just working on uh, adding in any little touch-ups. So if we want to sit here and correct some of our shadow, or I like to come in and maybe work on the whites of my eye a little bit. Sometimes I like to get a very small amount of skin tone, kind of reflecting down here by the waterline. Gives it a nice little effect. So it's very, very subtle. You really don't wanna go super heavy with this stuff, but I, I find that it just gives it a nice little touch and having that warm color in there gives it a, a, a decent amount of contrast. 
And I think I want to go, the, the whites of my eyes still feel a little bit too bright, so we might want to go a little bit more smoky, a little bit more dark, and maybe even a little bit more strong with our shadow in the eye. So just some touch-ups here. I'll continue on for, you know, maybe two more seconds here, and we'll call it done. I also like to uh, come through and maybe touch up the outer ring with a little bit of black, just very, very gently. If it's feeling uh, like it's kind of uh, a little misshapen from some of the other hand painting we've done, so you can kind of get some of that back in if need be. Or if you just want to sample some more colors here with that C key, you can get some of that blue and start, start kind of correcting some of this. But that is essentially it. That's, that's basically the whole process. So there we go. We've got some nice, uh, beautiful looking hand painted eyes. And it really, like I said, doesn't take all that long. All right, well, I hope you guys learned something new here today. Uh, if you guys want to learn more about sculpting faces, uh, painting faces, all that great stuff. There's a link down below to my Gumroad. Check it out, as well as all the videos here on my YouTube channel. I have a ton of free stuff here for you guys as well. You guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next video.